Today I'm going to be talking about how to upgrade this, which is an electric eel wheel nano 2.0, to the electric eel wheel nano 2.1. There's an upgrade kit on my store, which consists of these four bags. So this one's bobbins, this one's the flyer, here are the new sliding hooks, and this is a couple of miscellaneous parts which we'll use during the install. And I'll go over all of these in a little bit more detail soon. To do this upgrade, I recommend some super glue. You'll need a drill or you could also just have a pointy piece of metal that you heat up with a lighter or a torch or something and poke it through. You need to make a little hole in uh, some plastic and you need a screwdriver. And for the screwdriver, let me just show you because you're going to want to make sure you get one that fits this screw pretty well because sometimes this screw is a little difficult uh, for people to take off. If you have the right size screwdriver and a little bit of uh, hand strength, it's not too bad. So you, you put the screwdriver through here and then it goes and mates in with the screw like that. It's a Phillips head. So first off, you'll want to assemble one of the bobbins and it's just this bag full of bobbins here. You'll want to get uh, two of the end discs and there's two different types. You're gonna need one of each. One of them has a little pulley on the end and the other one's flat. So you take one of each of those types of discs and you just screw them onto one of the bobbin tubes like this and just screw until it's nice and snug. Next up is this bag. This contains the flyer along with a few other things. Inside here is the uh, instruction manual for the electric eel wheel 2.1, just so you have the latest version of the manual. And I also included these, this card. Uh, which you can use to access this video and other uh, instructions about assembling this kit. Then you're gonna take the flyer and put on the sliding hooks. When putting on these hooks, you wanna put the side with the O-ring on, this black O-ring, you wanna make sure that goes on first. And if you do that, then things will automatically line up correctly. So just make sure that O-ring side of the sliding hook goes on first. So now you have the flyer. It looks like this with the hooks on it. You want to, from the parts bag, get this large bearing, this small bearing with the white sidewall, and this bobbin that you've previously assembled. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the large bearing and you're going to line it up uh, so that it goes on to the uh, larger end of the flyer. And I find that putting it on a table like this helps and then you sort of just push it down and it won't go all the way on. Like it's not currently all the way on, but it's sort of flush with this outside, but now it's lined up correctly and you can take it the rest of the way and just use two fingers, one on each side and sort of push it and snap it into place like that, and now it's all the way on. You wanna make sure it's all the way on. If it's not all the way on, then it's not going to function as well. So once you get that large bearing on, you're gonna take the bobbin that you've assembled and take the flat end of the disc, and that's the end that goes onto the flyer like this. Now, the other end has the little groove, which you're gonna use for the tension band later. And you take the white wall uh, bearing and you push that on all the way and then at this point the flyer is fully assembled. Now here are the parts from the part bag that you're going to want for this next step. You're going to want one of these little square black squares that are a sticker on one side with this piece of paper. Or you don't have to remove the paper until later. There's this little nylon washer uh, this custom spring, a little screw. You're only gonna need one of these three strings. If you like to go really light tension, you might choose the smaller string. Then this uh, cotton string over here is 
what came with the electric eel wheel six it works pretty well and then there's this nylon string in the middle you can try them all and see which one you like best i'm going to start with this nylon cord and then a drive belt this is the same drive belt that was on there i just included a few extra spares if you're happy with how your drive belt's currently working you don't need that for this stage uh, you can just keep using your current one and keep the new ones as spares so what i recommend first is that you just remove the current flyer like you do every time you change the bobbin and you can just set all of that aside you're not going to be needing that flyer at all. Next, I'm going to use the screwdriver to remove the old tension dial. So I'm putting the screwdriver through like this and then uh, removing the screw. Again, you want to make sure that your screwdriver fits the screw well or else this could be somewhat difficult to remove. Okay, and then once you've removed this screw, you could reuse the screw technically, but I found that this screw is causing some problems. So I included this new screw, which is quite a bit longer, you can see, and that just grips the dial a little bit better. Then you can either untie this knot or just clip off the end, or you can just sort of pull it through like that. You're gonna reuse this dial portion, but you're not going to need this elastic cord anymore. So set the elastic cord aside. The next step is on the side that's opposite to the dial. So this side, um, remember the reason this hole is there is so you can push the screwdriver through to loosen and tighten the dial that goes on the other side. Uh, so you're gonna want to add a small hole to hold the spring and that will be pretty much directly under this hole, uh, pretty close to the bottom. So to do that, I just take a screwdriver and I will screw a hole right here. And that's all there is to it. The hole is drilled. If you don't have a screwdriver, but you have a little pointy piece of metal, you could heat that metal up and press a hole through it. It doesn't have to be the cleanest hole. It just has to be a hole this custom spring can fit through. Once you have that hole in place, you can put the custom spring in like this. You might find it a little easier. I've, I've kind of done it a few times, so I know exactly how to angle things, but you might find it easier if you have a pair of needle nose pliers to sort of help uh, get the uh, metal wire through that hole. Since the wire for the spring is pretty flexible, and returns back to shape. You don't have to worry too much about bending it. You just wanna get it so it looks like this. And I'll include a few close-up photos uh, so you can better see how it looks from both sides. Then once you're happy with how the spring is situated, to hold it in place, there's this little rubbery black patch and what I find is that you can just stick it in place, but it tends to sort of work its way out. So the trick that I've come up with is to use a little bit of super glue. And I just put a little bit of super glue onto the patch. Um, you can either put it on right now and then it won't stick quite as well when you're doing it. Or what I actually prefer is I like to put the let's see if we can get this on camera so there's the little custom wire from the spring and we're just going to it's not too critical where it goes you just push it so that it covers that and then once this is in place you can then put a little bit of super glue on the edges so that it doesn't uh, come up um, so this patch doesn't sort of release itself over time. If you want to try it without super glue, if you don't have any, you can. But if you find the spring is sort of um, pulling up this rubber patch, then, you know, use super glue or some other kind of glue to hold that patch a little bit better. Then the next step is to take the string and attach the string to your wire like this. And once you've got it threaded through the spring, you're going to want to tie a knot. And you can cut off the extra 
string on this side a little bit later. So at this point, I'll put the flyer in place like that. So then this tension string is gonna go over the bobbin like this down here, and then it has to wrap around the dial several times. So I'll generally leave about that much extra string. And I guess I did forget one tool you need. You need a pair of scissors or a knife to, to cut the string. So we've got that. And while I've got the scissors here, I guess I'll, I'll cut this extra. You don't want to cut this side too short uh, so it unravels, but you know, whatever works for you like that. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the string, wrap it around the dial a few times like that. I've done three here, you know, two is fine as well. It's not too specific. You just don't want it to, to slip on the dial too much. That's why I do it more than once. And then once you've done that, you're just gonna tie a simple knot like this. And if you want, you can cut off this extra, some of the extra string. And then at this point, you have the tension string attached to the dial like this, but you have to attach the dial to the spinning wheel. So then at this point, you're gonna want this new longer screw that I included and also this little nylon washer. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the screw and you're gonna put it in that hole. And it's a pretty tight fit, so you generally are gonna take the screwdriver and kind of screw it through that hole just to get it into place like that. Then you're gonna take the nylon washer and you put that on there. And what this does is this reduces the friction a little bit and makes it uh, more consistent when you turn the dial. And then after that, you take the screwdriver with this dial. So you're just going to use the screwdriver and hold the dial with one hand and the screwdriver with the other and just sort of turn the screwdriver like this. Uh, you can also turn the dial if you prefer that. So getting the exact tension you want is a little tricky. You kind of want to adjust it so that the dial does not turn too easily or too hard for your fingers. So I think it's a little too easy right now, so I'm gonna tighten a little more. And maybe just a tiny bit more, perfect. So that feels really good to my fingers right now. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist the dial clockwise like this until there's a little bit of tension. And you're gonna, of course, adjust the tension later as you go. I generally say, you know, maybe adjust it so that the spring is um, taunt, but not stretched out. Um, this would be, uh, the spring is stretched out. You might wanna start, you know, and there's no pressure on the string here. So I'm just going until the string, spring just starts to expand. And that's maybe a good starting place. At this point, your tension string is installed your bobbin is installed and you should be ready to test it out. There's a separate videos on how to use my e-spinners if you're not familiar with that, but it's very similar to how you use the electric eel wheel 2.0. So since you're upgrading it and you probably use the previous version, you already know those things. But if you want a refresher, go check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.